Fun facts. My name is Prachi. Back when movie theaters used to receive movies only as huge reels of film, trailers were actually played at the very end of movies. And this is the May check-in for my no-buy year. I know that fun fact because I never understood why they were called movie trailers, and one day out of curiosity I looked up the origins of the word to find that trailers used to actually trail after the film. Because it was easier to attach trailers to the very end of the film reel than to the start. Wasn't a great way of advertising movies though, because people would just get up and leave once the movie was done. So after we transitioned out of the film reels, they moved the trailers to the start of the film. Anyway, I'm gonna stop babbling about movie trailers now because this May check-in, she's hefty. A lot of things happened in May for me, and when I sat down to kind of reflect on the entire month in terms of my no-buy and general experience, I came up with a bunch of stuff. So much so that I actually have notes in front of me. I made a little outline of all of the different like lessons and epiphanies and realizations that I had during this month. There's so much going on in this video that I'm actually gonna give you a rundown of the topics right now. I'm gonna put those topics and their timestamps down in the description box. Like a table of contents, if you will. The topics include the importance of hanging out with people who aren't obsessed with makeup, the primacy of experiences over things, my feelings around makeup that's done in collaboration with something in pop culture, and the humbling realization that having a community truly means people have got your back. That's a lot to address in one video, I know, but those were all of my feelings throughout the month of May. So without any further ado, let's get it. So one of the really important things that I realized in the month of May, which is the fourth month of my no by year, which began on Feb 5th, is just how much being immersed in the beauty community disconnects you from reality. Very specifically, like, reality around the world of makeup. Listen, I love makeup, I love YouTube, I love, like, the little community we have here. You will note that my final point is about, like, community and community having your back. But beauty YouTube really messes with people's sense of what is normal and not normal in the world of makeup. And I mean, there's totally a conversation to be had about sort of the disconnected from reality way in which beauty YouTubers tend to do their makeup. False eyelashes with every single look, having 40 different makeup steps, really crazy contour highlight routines. Like I feel like everyone knows that all of that is pretty disconnected from the way in which like most people do their makeup. But what became really evident and apparent to me in the month of May was just how disconnected beauty YouTube made me from knowing what a normal amount of makeup to own was and what normal pricing for makeup is. Towards the start of May, I spent a week with my aunt and uncle in Minnesota. This is the aunt I mentioned in my May favorites who bought me Telluride by Bobbi Brown. She wanted me to help her be more comfortable with makeup, to get better at doing things other than just pencil eyeliner. And spending like half a day just kind of discussing makeup with her and discussing what steps she would be comfortable incorporating into her routine and what she would not feel comfortable incorporating into her routine what kinds of color she liked, what finishes she's going for, what tool she's willing to use. It really reminded me that like having a gajillion makeup products, like that's not the norm. Almost every single South Asian woman from my aunt's generation, and in fact a relatively significant cohort of my own classmates at U of T who also are South Asian, they own very little makeup. My aunt doesn't own eyeshadow or blush. She has like a tinted moisturizer, a couple lipsticks, and eyeliner, and that's it. She survived her entire professional career as a lawyer with just that much makeup. All of her makeup could fit in this bag with like lots of empty space. This on the other hand is one of my two travel bags. I took this and one other bag with me for a week in Minnesota. It really struck me that I have so much makeup. And yet, I still feel like my own collection is like tiny and inadequate and not enough because I'm so used to seeing makeup collections on YouTube. I'm so used to people just owning bunches of different eyeshadow palettes, like drawers full of cheek products and lip products that my own like Muji drawer and pouches seem like they're not enough. When in fact, I can say with like 95% certainty that the amount of makeup I have bought in my short 25 years on this planet 
is probably more than every single woman in my generation and my mom's generation combined over their collective lifespans. My aunt specifically wanted makeup that she could wear at upcoming family weddings. And I had bought with me like a little palette filled with like a curated collection of MAC single eyeshadows. Amongst them was this beautiful shimmery peachy gold amber lights and a beautiful shimmery bronze MAC bronze. And as I was showing my aunt how to apply those eyeshadows onto her lid with her fingers because she doesn't own eyeshadow brushes, my aunt was like noting down the eyeshadow names so she could buy them and so I just kind of, I gave them to her. I just, I realized at that moment, you know how you like learn a concept in school and because you learn it in one particular academic context, you like don't see how it applies in a bunch of other areas in your life? In economics, we learn all the time about diminishing marginal utility, right? That is a phrase they throw out every single time in economics. And the idea is that when you have a thing, it gives you a certain amount of utility happiness, joy, usefulness, whatever. Marginal utility is how much extra utility you get for the acquisition of each additional product. Marginal utility would be, I only have one lipstick. I go out and I buy another lipstick. How much happier am I? How much more robust is my makeup collection? How much more useful is it to me? That bump in happiness and usefulness, that's marginal utility. And in economics, there's this reality of the world called diminishing marginal utility. And what that means is that when I have zero lipsticks and then I get one lipstick, that rocks my world. It's a game changer. When I go from one lipstick to two lipsticks, that's pretty game changing too, because maybe I only had a My Lip But Better lipstick, and now I also have a red. And then I get a third lipstick, maybe like a Vampy Berry, and then a fourth lipstick, maybe a nude. And with the acquisition of each new lipstick, my utility, the overall like happiness and usefulness and robustness that I'm getting out of my makeup collection, it increases. But, and this is really important, it doesn't increase infinitely and with the acquisition of each new thing, the amount that my happiness increases gets smaller. So when I only had that My Lip But Better lipstick and then I got that second lipstick, which was a red, that was like a big jump in utility. My utility went up a lot. But when I already own 20 lipsticks and then I go out and I buy lipstick number 21, lipstick number 21 isn't going to give me nearly as much joy or utility or usefulness as lipstick number two that I had bought in my collection. That's the idea of diminishing marginal utility. That yes, each additional product will add to your happiness and it will be useful, but less so each time. Bringing this back around, I have so many different colors and finishes and textures and all of this kind of stuff when it comes to my eye makeup. And yet I still have like my antenna up looking for like new eyeshadow palettes and like singles and all of this kind of stuff. And why do I not feel like I have enough? Because I personally watch a lot of YouTube, like first impressions and reviews and favorites from really big beauty YouTubers who receive a lot of their makeup for free. And so I see all of the new releases all of the time and all everyone's saying is you've got to have this. This is the best thing ever. This is a game changer. And it's really not. You know what was a game changer? Giving my aunt who's never worn eyeshadows in her life two shimmery bronze and peachy gold eyeshadows. That's a game changer. Like my aunt is gonna show up for my mom's wedding wearing sparkly eyeshadow on her eyes. That is changing the game. The like hundredth possible eyeshadow that I could add to my collection, that's not game changing. I've been lying to myself for a really long time about the existence of diminishing marginal utility when it comes to makeup because some deluded part of my brain has been so brainwashed by the hyped up way in which people talk about makeup on YouTube that I really do think that next piece of makeup out there, that next lipstick, that next eyeshadow, that next blush, oh, those new cover effects blushes, I want them so bad. And a large part of why I want them so bad is because in my head, I'm like, oh, that's changing the game. That's revolutionary. I'm gonna get this product and it's gonna change my life. And like, no, it's not. If I owned no matte or shimmery blushes and then I went out and I got like the cover effects shimmering blush duo in, ooh, I don't know, warm honey or spice cinnamon, then yeah, 
that would be a game changer. That would probably transform my life because I'd go from a person who's never worn blush to a person who now has two. But as a person who already has a bunch of blush, realistically, how much is it really going to add to my life? Makeup companies and advertisers and beauty influencers who, let's be real, are low-key advertisers for makeup companies now, their job is to convince me that my life will be transformed if I buy their thing. Because their thing is like special and unique and there's truly like nothing like it. And it's like, actually, no. The number of makeup companies who come out with revolutionary products, products that actually are game changers in your makeup routine, in your collection, in your whatever, they're minuscule. They're tiny. The vast majority of us who enthusiastically watch beauty YouTube, we own so much makeup that the marginal utility that we get from the acquisition of each additional piece of makeup, it's truly not gonna do much. And as is the common theme during my no buy year and actually just in my life, I intellectually knew that and this was the first month where I just like viscerally felt it. The second major realization that I really had that was like one of those things where it's like people have said this my whole life and I've been like, yeah, you know, you're right. But again, I didn't like viscerally feel it is prioritize and spend money on experiences, not things. This month, there was only one weekend where I was home. Every other weekend, I was out of town doing something else. First, it was with my aunt in Minnesota. Then I got to go to New York City for the first time ever. And then the last weekend of May, I spent in the Buffalo Niagara region with my family. I had saved a bunch of money in order to go to my New York trip. And then a group that I really like, BTS, also happened to be having a stadium tour concert in New York. And I was lucky enough to be one of the people who got tickets because that stuff sold out like that. And so, my friend Catherine and I, we made plans and we rode the bus down in May and we did that. And the experience of it, we went to the MoMA on a Friday and after 4 p.m. on Fridays, the MoMA actually has free admission. So we didn't pay any money to go to the MoMA. Being able to see some of my favorite works of art of all time, being able to see The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali, being able to see the works of Frida Kahlo, being able to see one of my favorite paintings by one of my favorite artists of all time, Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. There's always a huge crowd around Starry Night and Catherine <laughs> Catherine, bless her heart, she does not give one damn about art. She went to the MoMA and endured that just for me because like I really wanted to go. And I kept like looping back around to Starry Night and I, I thought that I would be the most taken by that painting and I, and I truly was. Being able to see the brush strokes and the way in which she captured motion and movement in a completely still painting, like that was incredible, that was amazing. But what I was not expecting was Monet. Monet's one of those artists who I know of his work and I see a lot of his work and I find it very beautiful. But it has never spoken to me in the way that like the works of someone like Van Gogh have. And Water Lilies, like everyone knows, oh, Water Lilies by Monet. We've seen it on like bookmarks and tablecloths and postcards and all this kind of stuff. And for some reason in my head, I always thought that it was a really tiny painting. And to be able to walk into the entire room that is dedicated to the series, that was truly something else. And standing there, I got it, I think. <laughs> like I got why Monet did that. I got why those paintings are so big because when you're standing in that room and those paintings cover like an entire series of walls, for just a moment, the sheer scale of it does make you feel like you are outside in nature, in his garden, looking over a very beautiful pond covered in water lilies. I can go on about so many different things, like the experience of the MoMA was incredible. And what really struck me this month is that I could board a bus on Thursday night, show up in New York on Friday morning, walk around Times Square, take photos with the Love and Hope statue, grab a bite to eat, and then walk into the MoMA for absolutely free, spend four hours looking at all of the art I could ever possibly want to look at, walk back to the Port Authority, board a bus at 9 p.m. Friday night, and be in Toronto by 9 a.m. the next day. And I could do all of that for cheaper than the cost of one Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. There is no world in which 
I would want the Natasha Denona palette over that experience. My trip to New York City was incredible and it was incredible because of the experiences and like all of the money that I spent to get to New York, to eat the different foods in New York, to attend that BTS stadium concert, I didn't feel like one cent of it was poorly spent. It was better than all of the makeup I own and all of the makeup that I want to own. Now, did I look cute for the concert? Hell yeah, I did. Was my makeup on point? Absolutely. But the point I'm trying to make here is that if the morning that I had showed up in New York City, my two makeup bags that I had with me that had all of my absolute favorite makeup in them because I wanted to look my best in New York, if both of those bags had gotten stolen, like I had gotten robbed and the thief had taken the two makeup bags because I don't know, they thought they were purses, I still would not have regretted that trip. All that makeup that I would have theoretically lost in this robbery, 100% worth it. And I mean, like, that's just the New York City trip. Like, the weekend that I spent with my family in Buffalo on May 26th, like, that was also priceless. You know, I've been to Niagara Falls so many times. I've even been on the, like, boat rides, the Maid of the Mist and whatever the Canadian version of it. One has, like, blue ponchos, one has, like, red ponchos. I've been on those rides, like, a gajillion times as well. And you would think after a while that that would make Niagara Falls really boring, but there is something awesome about Niagara Falls. And I mean awesome in the original sense of the word. I didn't even go on the boat ride this time. No boats, no caves, no nothing fancy to experience the falls. Just the visual and most importantly the auditory experience because the falls are loud. And it truly is one of those like really humbling experiences where as you're like sitting there staring at this like torrential waterfall, I became acutely aware of like, I am just like one tiny person on this planet that I share not only with like 7 billion plus other humans, but like trillions and trillions of like other organisms. The earth is like a very big, fascinating, awe-inspiring place. And so May just kind of really reminded me that what money that I do have in my life I would much rather save it for really good experiences, whether that means experiences with my family who are spread out all across the world. And so to meet them would require me to have the financial ability to fly out to them and just like generally to explore the world because it's a big and beautiful place. If I were a more poetic person, if I were like a Hannah style poetess, I would probably draw some parallel about how I spend so much money on makeup in an effort to like beautify myself when really all I need to do is like look at the beauty of the world in order to feel good. But I don't have it in me right now to like come up with that coherent thought. <laughs> and because I am filming at sunset as, as always, I am truly losing daylight. So I'm gonna move on and just say that like it took four months into my no buy for me to radically change my perspective on makeup and beauty and how things are priced and like what's going on there. And what this month has done is that it has solidified the primacy of experiences inside my own head. And so it has provided me with a very simple and easy way to kind of like cut through the sort of like hazy and ill-formed desire for a thing. Like I have been obsessing for months and months and months now. I think probably over a year over Natasha Denona palettes. And I've always told myself, I'm, I want one, I want just one, and I'm waiting for the perfect one, and I don't even want one anymore. You know, there's like that really famous Kate Moss quote from the 1990s where she says, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. First of all, that quote, scam. There's so many things taste better than skinny feels. But my own version of that is like, no eyeshadow is as good as impressionism and post-impressionism feel. I'm such a dweeb, moving on. So what happened was across the street, I think people are like moving or something. And in the middle of me speaking, a truck outside the house made what felt like a 20 point turn. Literally felt like it was reversing on and off for like four minutes straight. And I could hear the beeping sound through my closed windows and doors. Like I could hear it personally. And when I, paused and just played the most recent clip back, I could also hear it on film and it was very annoying and persistent. And so I just paused, waited for the truck to finish doing its thing, turned on all of my house lights because it's dark outside now and continued. So the rest of the video is gonna be in this lighting. I hope it's acceptable. It's a much better alternative to the almost pitch blackness outside my window right now. 
rest in peace natural lighting now given like everything I've just said you might be thinking that like May I was just like living my best life and then I didn't think about shopping at all and that actually it was like a super easy month in my no buy and nothing tempted me and I was just like effortlessly breezing through it without wanting to buy anything absolutely false sorry if I have scammed you into thinking that actually the two things that actually most tempted me towards the start of May and which just sort of sat in the back of my head for the entire month of May were collaborations. Specifically, the Urban Decay Game of Thrones collaboration and the MAC Aladdin collaboration. I'm the clown that gets like suckered into buying an entire eyeshadow palette because I like Game of Thrones. And it was in the month of May that I actually finally had this like breakthrough about collaborations. And it's like a personal breakthrough. I feel like what I'm about to say is a super duper obvious statement. But again, what is the theme of this channel? The theme of this channel is first, everything's messy, nothing's perfect, and that's okay. You're okay, I'm okay, we're gonna be okay. The second theme of this channel is that we all intellectually know stuff. None of us ever act on it because there's knowing and then there's knowing. In the context of collaborations, we all have heard, hey, don't buy a thing just because X person is collaborating with Mac or because it's this TV show collaborating with this particular makeup brand. Only buy something from a collection if you're really going to use it. Don't buy a collaboration collection just because of the collaboration. Be a smart consumer. Only buy the things that you need. Feel like every single beauty channel has given that advice. I feel like I've heard that advice a billion times. I feel like when I enter into a store, I hear that advice in my head as my stupid hand reaches across the counter to buy the damn thing anyway. And here's how the concept like finally like sunk into my brain. I have these earrings. If I were a more organized person, I would be wearing the earrings of which I am speaking in this video. But unfortunately, because we're like moving house and all of the furniture in my room got sold really, really unexpectedly. So I had to like remove everything from my closet, dresser drawers, everything in order for that furniture to be able to be sold. I don't necessarily know where these earrings are. They're gonna turn up somewhere, I'm not panicked about it, but I don't know where they are. They were the earrings that I wore at the very end of my all pink everything get ready with me, and they're also the earrings that I was wearing during my April faves video. There are these beautiful wire earrings in the shape of flowers, and the earrings are different, they're mismatched. So one is a flower that looks something more along the lines of like a tulip or a rose, and then the other is more of like a gerbera daisy type of a flower. And I wore those earrings a lot during May. Not just to film those two videos, but while I was in Minnesota with my aunt and uncle, and to the BTS concert. Because here's the thing about those earrings. Those earrings are handmade on Etsy, and they're actually made by a fan of BTS and inspired by BTS's album artwork. So they're not official BTS merch. In some sense, it's a collaboration between BTS's work and jewelry. You might be thinking that I bought those earrings because I did with this piece of jewelry the same thing that I always do with makeup. I bought it because I got sucked in to the pop culture collaborative aspect of it and not because of the product itself. And that's where you would be wrong. Last year at the Royal Ontario Museum, there was an art and fashion exhibit, and it was a collaboration between Philip Beasley and a designer called Iris Van Herpen. Now she's Dutch, so I probably super mispronounced her last name, but she's a really avant-garde designer who uses fascinating materials, like plastics and metals and all of this kind of stuff to create really beautiful, futuristic, otherworldly clothing and jewelry. And I actually ended up going to that exhibit with my friend because I was so interested in, first of all, Philip Beasley's work in like artificial nature environments, but also in their collaboration. In order to get like the sculptural quality of her clothing just right, they've 3D printed metal and plastic clothes before to create these like beautiful, stunning dresses. And one of the beautiful 3D printed patterns is a floral one. And I wanted really badly to find wire earrings that looked like that. And so I started looking on Etsy to see if anybody made wire floral earrings. And I was scrolling through Etsy and I was looking at all these different designs and then I suddenly found a very, very familiar looking flower. So in 2017, BTS came out with an album called Love Yourself Her and there were four versions of that album with four different covers. I have two of them and they look like this. And if you like set all four albums next to each other, the artwork like flows together and the flowers all connect and each cover has this different and unique 
flower on it. Also, the photos on the inside are like of different concepts or whatever. So there's like different photo shoots for each of the four versions in addition to the different cover. Korean albums are like on a whole different level. Like, oh, here. They come with stickers. And I think this sticker shows all four of the flowers on it. And this woman on Etsy was basically selling earrings of each of those four different flowers. And she was like, you can either get a set of matching earrings or you can mix and match and pick which flowers you want. These two were my favorite flowers because they actually pretty closely resemble the art of Iris Van Herpen. And they're made out of like hypoallergenic, like surgical steel, so they wouldn't irritate my ears. And I read the reviews and people had posted pictures of the actual earrings, which were handcrafted by a person in the US. And so it was with great joy that I purchased those earrings. It was pure serendipity that a thing that I was externally already looking for happened to coincide with something in pop culture that I love intensely. The incredible thing is I have never worn those earrings without receiving compliments. And 90% of those compliments have nothing to do with BTS. So people just think they're beautiful earrings in their own right. It really solidly clicked in for me that the mindset that I've always had with regards to collaboration is like so very backwards. The way I used to approach makeup collaborations was if I liked the person or thing in pop culture, I would decide preemptively that I was going to get something from the collection. And so then when a collection was released, the way that I would look at it was through the lens of I have to get something. Of the things, what is the most useful or practical? I don't know if anyone else does that. Like, I don't know if anyone else gets like suckered in like me where they're like, okay, I gotta get something from the collection. What is the thing that would work the best on my skin tone? What is the thing that like is the most practical? I was already doing that with like Urban Decay Game of Thrones and MAC Aladdin. I looked at the MAC Aladdin collection and I was like, oh, that vibrant pink lipstick, Raja, that would be probably be the thing I get the most wear out of. It's really similar to the color I'm currently wearing on my lips. It would be good or nice to have. Doesn't quite meet the high bar that I'm now setting for the things I want to buy. Every single thing that's coming into my life from now into the future, I'm gonna think concretely. Remember how you felt when you like held the love yourself earrings? Is that what you're feeling or is what you're feeling something else? And if what I'm feeling is not that feeling, I'm gonna do what all of the dare officers told me to do in fifth grade when someone offers me drugs. I'm gonna just say no. The final thing that I learned in May that I wanna discuss is the importance of community because it's community that kind of has your back, right? Like May was a really like toxic month for some members of the beauty community. But in like my own personal life, in the no buy and in this channel, community just ended up being like this incredible pillar of joy and support and fun and in like multiple senses. So the more profound way in which like the communities that I'm a part of have had my back has a lot to do with this channel and to do with how I was really kind of like going through it with the KonMari method and having kind of dilemmas and all of the comments and responses that I got under that video, hearing everybody's feedback, hearing how everybody else conceptualized decluttering and the potential tensions between decluttering and my no buy and sparks joy and potential perfectionism versus learning to make crappy things work for you. I got real good solid advice from like so many of you and I got like really cool concrete tips but I also got like really valuable philosophical insights and tips and one of the ones that stood out the absolute most to me and which actually like soothed the, the mental tension and pressure that I was feeling was a new way of framing the act of keeping so-so products that don't seem to themselves spark joy. And it was this idea that my no buy is a thing which sparks joy. If I declutter a bunch of things and then I feel like I've broken my no buy, that's not gonna make me feel good. There is joy in the fact that I am on a no buy, in that I have created certain rules for myself and that I am following them both in letter and in spirit with the KonMari declutter. And therefore the dilemma I was having about keeping skincare products that are functional for me and which don't inherently spark joy is that the act of keeping them still does spark joy because keeping them is a way of me maintaining integrity with myself and my no buy. And that is the thing which gives me an immense amount of joy. And seeing it reframed that way, hearing your advice, having community just like show up for me 
and for each other because like multiple people in the comments were also telling me that they were dealing with the same things. And so then the comments of that video became a resource not just for me but for everyone watching it who was feeling and experiencing the same thing. That's pretty awesome. The magnitude and the beauty and importance of that had just like really jumped out to me this month. So thank you for having my back in a very, very important way. Especially because I came out in May, which was not a thing I ever planned on doing on YouTube. Like, honest to God, I was just going to do YouTube for one year, document my no buy, and like, peace out, and have nobody on the internet ever know that I was like, not a straight person. I was just gonna be like, you're gonna show up, you're gonna do your thing, four people are gonna watch you, you're gonna peace out, but you're gonna have learned video editing and that's that on that. Like that was gonna be my whole experience. And the fact that like I came out and was met with only the kindest of comments, like that was, oh, we are not doing this today. This video is way too long for me to be having an emotional breakdown, get it together. That meant a lot to me. <laughs> And thank you for that. A much shallower way in which the communities I belong to had my back was with regards to makeup. And what I mean by that is I thought because I was going to be on a no buy year that I would just have zero access to any makeup at all. Because the odds of me running low on any category of color cosmetics is like little to none. And the weirdest thing has been, I don't know if any of y'all are also on a no buy, but if you are, please tell me if you've also had this experience. Publicly telling people that I'm on a no buy, like in my real life, has suddenly led to way more people offering and giving me makeup than at any other point in my life. Like I already talked in my May favorites about how my aunt bought me the Bobbi Brown lipstick and Telluride without telling me what she was doing. And while my aunt and I were playing with her makeup, she had brought out all of the lipsticks that she owned. And one of them that she never used, and she was complaining to me about how she hated it because she felt like it was way too pink on her lips, was this mini lipstick by Bite Beauty in Chai. It was part of the birthday present last year. and. I have it too, and the one that I have is substantially more used than my aunt's because I actually really, really love this lipstick. As I was just casually telling my aunt, like, oh, that's the birthday present, it's Bite Beauty Chai, like, it's such a great lipstick, I wear it all the time. She just, without even a word, just handed it to me and was like, I don't use it, you said you wanted to buy a full size of it, don't do that, use mine instead. So I walked out of the equation with two fewer eyeshadows than I came in, but with two new lipsticks. And that happened to me when I went to my sister's house too. I actually found this L'Oreal lipstick that I had decluttered to her, which is very, very similar to the color All Fired Up. It's what's on my lips right now. And my sister was just like, yeah, take it. Like, I've never worn it since you decluttered it to me. Just take it. Same deal with this like nude, super bougie Guerlain lipstick. The other two things that I picked up from her collection is that I've been using some of the MAC eyeshadows that I reclaimed from her as duochrome highlights, but I also remember that a while back I had bought a duochrome highlight from NYX and then decluttered it to my sister and I asked her if she was using it and she said she absolutely wasn't because she's not a duochrome highlight kind of person. My sister's into like neutral makeup, classic makeup, and so she found the highlight that I'd given to her. It's a NYX highlight in Snow Rose. It looks hella busted because I used to use it a lot back in the day. She was glad to be rid of it. I was glad to have it back. And the same was also true for this eyeshadow palette that I decluttered to her six months ago. It's one of the Urban Decay Jean-Michel Basquiat collaboration palettes. But I specifically wanted this palette back because there's a very cool tone steel gray. And this is really the only gray eyeshadow that I own. But I wanted this in order to try a smoky eye for my mom's wedding on my actual mother, and just to see if I was being prejudicial against gray tone eyeshadows, since cool tone eyeshadows are apparently trendy or back in style or whatever again. And then I was actually chatting with another friend, and she's a person who like sort of knows about makeup. She wears makeup, but like my sister, she wears mostly just like very neutral, plain makeup. And she watches like a couple people on YouTube, but not very many. But she noticed that I have and really love one Urban Decay Moon Dust shadow in Space Cowboy, right? It was in my April favorites. I was wearing it a lot throughout the month of April. Like she saw me actually wear it in person, asked me about it, and we had a chat about the Moon Dust shadows. She actually owns the Urban Decay Moon Dust palette. And so as we're chatting about my eye makeup and the Moon Dust eyeshadows and stuff, she was like, you know what? The next time we meet, I will bring you the Moon Dust eyeshadow palette. 
And I was like confused, Mr. Krabs meme. I was like, what? What is happening? Like, you're gonna give me, you can't give me a whole palette? Like, why would you do that? And she basically like argued me down. She was like, listen, I have it. I like swatched it a couple of times. I hate glitter. It's messy. I don't have the proper tools. I don't have a glitter glue. I have no interest in wearing glitter. Like, I bought it because I bought into the hype. You've been talking about how you really want to step up your eyeshadow game and you've been wanting like shimmery green eyeshadows to use as a liner. And guess what? There's a green glitter in there plus like blue and all these other colors so you can do lots of cool glitter eyeliner looks. And I'm not gonna argue with you, I'm gonna bring it the next time, you're gonna take it, and that's that. And I was like, well, dang. And it just, it kind of really floored me, the fact that she had been paying this much attention and the way that she just like generously gave up her own palette, unprompted, <laughs> just because she knows that I really like glitter. And so ironically for a person on a no buy who thought she would have no access to color cosmetics at all, I ended up acquiring like a whole bunch of makeup from people in my actual life, from my everyday community who understood that I was on a no buy and that I loved makeup and just like accommodated me. Only one of those products was specifically like bought for me. Everything else was just like, people swapping and giving me things that they already owned. And the really funny thing is, I've always been on the other side of the equation. I'm always the person who has a boatload of makeup and then I don't use a lot of it and then I give a bunch of it away to everybody. I'm the person who when you want makeup but you feel like you can't afford it or you don't wanna spend money on it or whatever, like I'm the makeup fairy godmother. I'm the person who will like go through my collection, look for things that I think would suit you and then specifically give them to you from my own collection. Like I did with those two eyeshadows for my aunt, like I did with my own two Face Natural Eye Palette and Chocolate Bar Palette with my sister. Unlike these things, which I just decluttered and then my sister took them because my sister is like low-key, high-key a hoarder, those Too Faced palettes were very deliberate declutters that I made to her because her own favorite neutral eyeshadow palette was running low and she absolutely loved the Too Faced Natural Eyes palette but didn't want to buy it. When another friend of mine was getting really into rosy pink eyeshadows, I gave her my Naked 3 palette because I wasn't using it. So like, I'm literally the person in everybody's life who is constantly giving giving them the makeup that they themselves don't want to buy if I have it. And so then to suddenly be on the other side of the equation, to have everybody in my community just suddenly have my back and be like, hey girl, we know you're on a no buy, we know there's certain things you want, we've been paying attention and like let me pull the things from my own collection that I'm not using in order to give them to you because I think you would get better use out of them than I would. That was so incredible and cool to see because that's the conversation I always have in my head when I give makeup to everybody else, right? I'm like, oh, I'm not using it and you're gonna get so much more joy out of it. And then to suddenly have the situation go be a 180. Well, well, well how the turntables. It was simultaneously hilarious and really, really touching. So the Moondust palette, I don't know when I'm gonna see my friend next, but that'll be added into my collection as well. If I end up getting that palette during the month of June, just know that I will be one very glittery gay all throughout Pride Month. <laughs> Everyone in both my virtual and analog communities has been just like, top-notch human beings this month. They've really had my back and that's that's truly been something. Oh god, this video is so long, but the final point I kind of want to sneak in here is a little bit about this channel. It's just like the, the preview of what's coming up. I have an essay due on June 14th. I have final exams on June 19th and 20th for my two first summer semester courses. I also have the report for a grant deadline due that I have to help the nonprofit I work with write. Then the first week of July, 4th of July weekend, my mom is getting married. And then the weekend after that, on the 15th of July, which is a Monday, is my LSAT. And what that basically means is that from now, the start of June, all the way through to July 15th for the next five weeks or so, I'm just kind of like in like stressful lockdown. I'm gonna be going through it. I've already kind of been going through it for the last couple of weeks, as you might have been able to tell from my sort of like sporadic responses to comments, but I'm realizing now that this is an increasingly very important period of my life, right? It's like five to six weeks, but there is a lot riding on it. I really need to be focusing all of my time and all of my energy on making sure that my grades are really solid, that my LSAT is really solid, and then secondarily that the anemia project that I'm working on, the work for that is good, and that the nonprofit that I work with to do grant writing, that their report 
for their grant and how that money was used is written and gets turned in on time. Hanging over all of that is my own personal family obligations because my mom is getting married and making sure that like she supported throughout all of that and that I'm part of the wedding planning and all of that kind of stuff. Like all of that is happening for the next like five to six weeks. And what that means in terms for my channel because this, unfortunately, while being a thing that gives me great joy, is also the lowest priority thing in my life in terms of importance, this is gonna have to take a backseat. And here's what that means. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to upload, and it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna read comments. What it does mean is that the commitment I made was to upload one video per week every Saturday. And for the last couple of weeks, for like the last month plus actually, I have been uploading two videos per week, one sometime during the work week and then another on a Saturday. I just wanna make sure, especially because I've gotten like a couple newer subscribers over the last couple of weeks, to reset and remind everybody of like the expectations and my commitment. The videos I've been posting throughout the work week, those are bonus videos. What I'm committed to is one video per week on a Saturday and realistically until my LSAT is over, that's what's gonna happen. One video a week is all that I'm going to be delivering. Additionally, just giving you a heads up, a couple of those videos will be like pre-filmed. Like they'll be content that I filmed this month or in the last week of May, like my KonMari decluttering of my books. So that's change number one channel wise. The other change will be that I have been so sporadic with replying to comments, not just because I've been really busy, but also because I've been heading into it with the wrong mindset. I have a very big problem with sort of all or nothing thinking. It falls in line with why I'm such a perfectionist. I put a lot of undue pressure on myself to read and then properly respond with like thoughtful responses to every single comment. So many of you leave really long, beautiful, thoughtful comments and when I see that, my gut instinct is to then also write you a novel in response because as you may have guessed from the insane length of this video, I'm a very verbose person. I'm so all or nothing with the comments that I don't let myself hit the heart on a comment unless I've already typed out my reply to it. Because in my head, I'm like, I either gotta do it 100% perfectly or not do it at all. And I just don't wanna do that anymore. I need to take a chill pill. I need to like let myself off the hook and stop trying to be a perfectionist when it comes to comments and doing comments perfectly, whatever on earth that means. And because of that, the new rule that I'm instituting for myself, my new comments policy, at the very least for the next month and a half till my like LSAT and stuff is over, is the following. I am still going to read every single comment. I already do that. If you have left a comment on my channel, I have read it. Like every single comment under my KonMari video, I have already read that. The reason why I haven't been giving out hearts to all of them is because I've only been giving out hearts to the ones that I have replied to. And the ones that I haven't hit the heart on are ones which I felt necessitated a reply, but I didn't have the bandwidth or the energy or the time to write the novel that I usually would write. And because of that, I haven't even let myself hit the love button and acknowledge that I've read the comment. But I've read every single comment. And so I'm not gonna be putting myself through that like weird, torturous, I should be like this, I should be perfect, blah, blah, blah thing anymore. What I promise to you is I'm going to read every single comment. If I've read your comment, I'll give it a heart. The heart is the way for you to know that I have read your comment. Also, incidentally, you should know that if you have left more than one comment on my channel, like if I've seen your username twice, I remember you. If you've shared any details about your life in like any previous comments, I remember that. I remember who's from New Zealand. I remember who grows roses in their backyard. I remember who's a mathematician. I remember who's trying to write their thesis. So I do need y'all to know that. And also like, I just got like choked up over our community and all of you guys' comments and stuff. So please do understand that these memes right here that I'm about to insert, these like heart memes, this is the energy that I am personally radiating at you when I hit that little like heart to love your comment. This is the mood. This is the energy. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I wish I could put into words. These memes. Now, if you leave the type of comment that has like questions and stuff embedded in it, I will answer that question. But beyond that, I'm not committing to answering comments, especially in depth, beyond like a thanks and a heart emoji. But again, the thanks and the heart emoji and the little loves your comment, those memes that you just saw, that's the energy I'm radiating out. Just know that my brain is like at wit's end trying to marshal all of the other areas of my life. And as much as I would love to write you a novel of a comment and I have 
probably done so in the past. I just, I can't do it right now and I'm so sorry. What I'm really doing right now is setting an expectation and letting myself off the hook, giving myself permission to be less than perfect with the way in which I deal with comments. I'm really just getting the weight of my own expectations off of my own shoulders. I have babbled on for so long. I sat down to film at 5.30. It's 11.45. I have taken up so much of your time. If you have actually made it all the way to the end of this video, truly thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the very, very bottom of my heart. You are a trooper and here's an extra heart meme just for you. As always, I hope you have a great upcoming week. And even if your upcoming week ends up becoming messy and imperfect, I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. See you guys next Saturday. Bye.